Howdy my friends, Sam Haymart with Test Driven TV. Today we are test driving the all new 2022 Jeep Grand Cherokee L, the extended length three row version of the Grand Cherokee. So I'm gonna show it to you inside and out. We're gonna take it for a drive and I'm gonna tell you what it's really like to live with. All new in 2021, the Jeep Grand Cherokee L and now the Jeep Grand Cherokee, the shorter two row version, have been completely redesigned from the ground up with all new chassis architecture and a lot of new technology to go along with all of the new styling that you see. The one that we have here today is the Summit trim grade, which is almost near the top, the Summit Reserve being one more step up. As tested with the options, this one prices out at about $63,000 and just a little bit of change. The styling here really represents the new face of Jeep as we get into their luxury models. Looking at the front, you can see sort of a forward-leaning silhouette that's a little bit more like the Jeep Wagoneers of the 60s and 70s. A little bit of retro going on there, and you can really see that when you're looking over the hood from behind the wheel. It's a nice square sort of 70s-esque hood line. We are in the modern era, however, and we have LED headlights, LED fog lights. Everything here is right up to snuff and what you'd expect in our modern era. Coming around the corner, you can see that this does have body color wheel lip moldings and rockers, something that you see on the higher line models models and the wheels on this one are 20 inch wheels they're polished aluminum they have kind of a nice satin finish on them i really like that one thing i want to point out though on this particular one is this has the air suspension on it which automatically lowers the vehicle when you park and it raises it back up to wherever you might have it set now i've actually turned that off i turned off the automatic park lowering because if you look underneath you can see those plastic pieces part of the air dam are actually sort of coming apart there and that's because every time i would pull it into a parking space it would automatically lower down and then when you had to start it up and leave it would drag that air dam across the parking curbs and so uh very quickly tearing that thing up because this thing doesn't raise itself back up faster than you're putting in a reverse and driving away so if you're looking at buying one of these things or if you own one of these things i'd highly recommend either learning to wait 60 seconds before you drive away or you can go in and actually turn that system off coming down the side the show of handsome styling just continues look at the roof this is a styling treatment that we first saw in the Jeep Compass a couple of years ago, and this piece of chrome wraps down into the rear that allows Jeep to offer a two-tone paint treatment on the Grand Cherokee and Cherokee L. Here, this is a monotone, but you can option it with different color roof panels. Pretty slick. Looking at the taillights, these are LED, of course, and they're a nice, wide, horizontal, thin design that really emphasizes the width and the length here. This is, of course, a power hatch, operatable by a number of different ways. And down in the lower fascia, you can see some pretty well executed exhaust finishers down there. And in the center, a spot where that panel can be removed for a trailer hitch receiver. Sitting behind the wheel of the Grand Cherokee, there's no wonder why this just made Ward's 10 best interiors list. Honestly, this is one of the nicest, most well-designed interiors I've seen in an American vehicle in a very long time. It's just beautiful to look at. On this trim grade, there's genuine wood. There's Napa leather with quilted stitching. There's soft stitch trims across the dash on the door panels. Just look at that door panel. Isn't that just beautiful to look at? The finishes in here include piano black, which is also beautiful to look at, though here in Arizona, I find it impossible to keep clean. Just one of the rules of the road. But sitting here, I find these seats very comfortable. They're both power operated for the driver and passenger. They're heated, they're ventilated. The steering wheel, leather wrapped, also has wood trim on it, paddle shifters, and a lot of nice switch gear. Ahead of me is a fully digital instrument cluster, and you can customize this in a number of different ways. It does have night vision also. That must be pointed out. It's a it's very interesting function that helps you see a little bit better at night. Also a head-up display that I can see in the windshield. Human interface and audio screen right in the center. Hard controls down below for that, as well as the HVAC, the heated and ventilated seats, and so forth. And looking at the center console, it looks very clean here in this picture, unfettered. Down in the bottom, there's a storage cubby here with a wireless charger for your phone, as well as 
power ports for a number of different things four usb ports two different kinds and a 12 volt port in the center drive mode selector and this has the air suspension auto leveling automatic it's controller is on the right and in the center is the dial gear selector not one of my favorites not very intuitive i always prefer a lever because you can learn by feel where you're at when you're maneuvering forward and reverse uh, the knob just isn't quite as easy to use it's just um, technology for technology's sake opening up this there are cup holders down in the bottom and in the center console a pretty good level of storage down here a little bit bigger than a square tissue box but not much bigger than that also with this trim grid comes the panoramic moonroof which gives a nice airy atmosphere in here and with the tech package this has this also has a digital rear mirror so when you flip it to what normally would be night and day you get a digital image that's projected on there from a camera at the back of the vehicle i tend to find that when i wear my glasses when driving it it, it causes trouble so I, I keep it on the normal mirror but some people that don't have vision issues um, that does give you a better view of what's behind you the second row and third row of the jeep grand cherokee l we have three of course because this is the l uh, very spacious as you can see these seats are set for my height about 5'9 with my boots on the second row has full adjustability you can slide these forward and back and the back rake adjustments also adjustable it's a little harder to do sitting here nope there it is um, and so you have a full adjustability range for your second row seating down on the center console a lot of amenities back here for these passengers a full hvac control panel four usb ports again two different kinds and here you have a 115 volt ac outlet as well for charging or running any number of things if you get up into the summit reserve one level above this you also get ventilated seats back here in addition to the heated seats that are here now because we have the captain's chairs in this one there's a nice center console back here it's got storage inside of it and cup holders and cubbies down below in addition to other things both of the second row seats fold forward out of the way and they give you pretty good access to that third row and as you can see now i'm not getting back there but there's actually some pretty good space back there for real genuine adults and that does seat two so you do have in this configuration a total of six passengers there is an option for a bench seat here which will give you up to seven now when it comes to folding all these down this is pretty slick we have a completely remote control folding mechanism at the back pushing of a button both of the two third row seats go down with power operation and then buttons will release these two second row seats down into a low position now you don't get a 100 percent flat load floor here but uh, it is very convenient to be able to stand back there and just push a button or two and get all of this stuff out of your way without having to open doors and do things if you're shopping in a tight parking lot i love that underneath that rear floor is a storage area where you're going to find your jack the spare tire is actually mounted underneath the vehicle having the panoramic moonroof back here is very nice even though i got my hat on that'll keep the sun out of my eyes as we go traveling around in the mountains and this also does have window shades on the back doors for your rear passengers not for the third row however good news is there are vents back there and vents down here on the center console when it comes to rating this interior as i said this is an absolutely beautiful interior to look at it's got a lot of high quality materials in it in terms of wood and leather soft stitch materials there's a lot of feature content here and the fit and finish as you look at it across the board is very good the switch gear is very good however in my driving around this week i have noticed a lot of squeaking and rattling and creaks going on in here now some of that goes to the structural rigidity of this new body structure but a lot of it has to do with the trims in here and one other thing i'd point out is sort of the execution of this soft stitch dash look at all the seams and all of the lines in that as opposed to a big solid piece of material like a lot of other manufacturers accomplish for some reason they've just got several seams that looks like a patchwork um, very small detail it's still very pretty to look at it's very luxurious but um, it's just a little curious to me nonetheless all in i rate this interior at four out of five stars 
Talking about audio and the human machine interface here, this is the top of the line system with a 10 plus inch screen, touch screen, has a very glossy finish on it. It's the latest Uconnect system from Stellantis and thus the graphics are very pretty to look at and the menu structures here are generally very well done. They've given me hard controls here, volume and tuning knob. And so when you combine all of that, it's an easy to use system. Audio here, this has 19 speakers, 950 watts, Macintosh, high-end audio. It sounds absolutely great, even on satellite radio, but you don't have to stop there. AM, FM, of course, and this also has Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, and it's wireless here. So a lot of feature content, awesome audio. There's a 10-inch subwoofer also. I forgot to mention that. So it does sound absolutely great. And with all the rattles and squeaks this interior has, maybe it's because people have been listening to this thing really loud and bumping that bass. Got a great backup camera and a surround view monitor setup. That's very well done. Um, this is a system that gets five out of five stars. It just doesn't get better than this. All right, my friends, now it's time to take a drive. And the first question I always like to ask this how does it go? Noisy. Woof. And 60. Takes a little bit of time to get there, doesn't it? So what we've got under the hood is a 3.6 liter Pentastar V6. It's rated at 293 horsepower and has 260 pound feet of torque. I think that's what we were missing back there is a little bit of torque. All of that goes through an 8-speed automatic transmission here, and this has, of course, the full top-of-the-line four-wheel drive system from Jeep. This does have drive modes, rock, sand, mud, snow, auto, sport. I put it in auto right now, and um, this does have an auto start-stop system to help it save fuel. It's a very aggressive auto start-stop system, which means I'm coming to a stop and off goes the engine let off the brake it starts back up and off i go i absolutely hate it i hate auto start stop systems now yes we can turn it off but you have to turn it off every single time you start the car annoying af um err my observations here with this powertrain it's noisy i mean it's noisy when i first got this car I started it up and I was wondering if they put the eco diesel under the hood. Seriously. And I'm around cars. I know cars. I should know better than, is that a diesel or gas? I don't know. No, seriously, it was noisy, right? And so I, I actually, and I've heard the eco diesel, it sounds a lot like it. I actually had to think, well, I know they don't offer it. Maybe they gave me a surprise one or something. No, I had to look into it a little bit to make sure I was actually driving a 3.6 liter gasoline engine. And of course I am. It's just noisy. A lot of mechanical noise coming out from underneath the hood here not only at idle and just driving around at slow speeds but when you really mash it that's noise it's not engine sound it's noise there's a difference so i don't know what that's about this is an engine that's been around for quite a while it's on board's 10 best engine list there's a lot of things they've done to make this refined uh, it's got active engine mounts it's got active noise cancellation it's got a lot of things to enhance the refinement and quiet of this engine yet uh, it's a lot noisier than i've experienced it in other chrysler oh i'm sorry it's a lot noisier than i've noticed it in other stellantis brand products dodge chrysler so i'm not quite sure what's going on with that but it's noisy here now fuel economy this is rated at 18 city 25 highway and 21 combined in my week with it i got just under 18. So um, part of that's because this engine works pretty hard to move this big, heavy, extended length Cherokee around. And I think that might be part of what's at work here. It might very well be that if you like having power under your foot with a vehicle like this, you might opt for the 5.7 liter V8. It's also got a little bit more of that torque as well. So um, when it comes to rating this powertrain, um, big hits on refinement, not only because it's noisy and a little bit rough at idle when you're around town at slow speeds, but also because of this auto start saw system. This powertrain gets four out of five stars. On the topic of ride and handling, well, this is an all new chassis. It's an evolution of the previous generations, but not much is carried over. 
They went to a lot of engineering and design work to lightweight this. It has increased use of aluminum in its substructures as well as some of the body panels, high strength steels. They've really gone to a lot of work to make this strong yet lighter. And it has, of course, a fully independent front and rear suspension here automatically adjusting air suspension. There is a switch down here on the center console that you can adjust the ride height. You can set it down low for aero or you can raise it up high for going off road. It can go up to 2.4 inches higher on your ride height, giving you a total ground clearance of 10 plus inches. It's amazing. And as we talked about at the beginning, it also has an auto park feature where it can lower. So it's fully adjustable, the air suspension. And with that are adaptive shocks that all of these things you can adjust manually, but you can also just have those things be dependent on your drive mode. So the actual ride height and the feel of it can change when you adjust that from auto to sport, for instance. Overall, I find that the ride is compliant. It's actually a little bit on the cushy side around town on the highway. You do get a floating sensation, so it is more tuned towards luxury. Uh, when you drive in and out of driveways, when you drive over speed bumps, or just going on twisting, undulating roads, I find that this body structure is very flexible, and that's not a good thing. That's really where a lot of the squeaking and the creaking and the rattling comes from when I'm driving this thing. It, it, it's so prevalent, it's almost like driving an old RV. The only thing missing is the stove rattling in the back. But moreover, when you go over undulations and things, and this body flexes, you can hear the trim in here just creaking with it. It just really makes it feel like a POS. And that's a sad thing because it shouldn't, not for $70,000. And the scary part is we haven't even taken it into the dirt yet. Off the pavement, the first thing I'm noticing out here is that all the things we talked about on the pavement, the rattles, the squeaks, the flexible body structure, well, they're more amplified out here. I hate to say it. One of the reasons I bring vehicles out here to the Desert Washboard Road is to see how well put together they are, how well tuned is the chassis to handle rough, vibrating, rhythmic surfaces. If there's an upshot here, it's the fact that the suspension and the steering itself feels very well put together. I'm not getting any rattling or shuddering in the steering. I'm not getting any noises from the suspension that tell me that it's anything less than robust. That's the good part. The handling out here on these gravel curves where you get slip and pitch and yaw when you sort of throw it into a corner, very predictable, very well done. The fail here, if there is one, and I think there is just a little bit of one, is the fact that this body structure just, it just feels flimsy. You know, they lightweighted it, and now it's got body flex and the trim and all of the fitments in here just, ah, I feel like I'm beating a dead horse with that, but it, it really can't be ignored when you're driving this vehicle around. That said, the ride and handling experience here gets three and a half out of five stars. All right, my friends, I gotta tell you, I really do like this vehicle. I find it very handsome. I love the interior and I love the fact that like Jeep has always done, you can have this thing in so many ways. You can get something a lot less expensive than this and you can still spend more. You can get all the way up to around $70,000 with this vehicle before you might wanna start looking up at the Grand Wagoneer if you really wanna go crazy. But here at $63,000, we're pretty close to the top, but not all the way. Now, when I start thinking about value, you know, you gotta look at sometimes what can you compare this against? There is the Lincoln Aviator, but not nearly uh, as well equipped when it comes to off-road capability as this is. You can start looking at Range Rover, Mercedes, BMW, that gets into some of physically and functionally what we have here, but they're a lot more expensive, a lot more expensive. So. Uh, in one way of looking at it, value is very good at $63,000 considering all the equipment we have here. However, uh, quality, and we talked about some of those things, the quality here just, uh, ouch, some of the things here just really sort of surprised me. And when I start looking at that and the warranty coverage that's standard here, not the best in the business, not the worst, but I would say class average, I put value at four out of five stars. When you put that in with everything we've already talked about, we're at four out of five stars for the total review. So there you go. Now, if you like the review you just saw, I'd recommend highly that you see our latest one right there. Better yet, subscribe to our YouTube channel right down there. Either way, stay tuned.